one. Bingo, I'm back. As he said, she said, uh, our Monday show with uh, Miriam Sasaki and me, where we kick it back and forth. And since I just spent uh, three weeks and change uh, in Europe and in New York, um, there's plenty to kick around. Uh, the first thing I'd like to throw at you, Marianne, uh, is the conditions of the airports. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, Our third world airports? <laughs> yeah, well, if you go to Asia, you see the most beautiful airports. Now, there's been some commentary about can they really afford that. Well, they find a way. It's there. It's beautiful. Um, if you go to uh, you know, Europe, the airports are likewise beautiful. Uh, and what, what I found, for example, in, in Lisbon is so interesting, is that on the way out of the country, or in, in the country for that matter, but mostly out of the country, there's restaurants, really first class. Uh, there's shopping like you'd find in, uh, in Palm Court in Ala Moana. You really? Know, international stores all around. You could buy things at any price. And how'd you find JFK? Did you go to JFK or LaGuardia? Uh, or Newark? No, Newark. Newark, oh, Newark. Newark is nice. Yeah. I like Newark. You know, you could go to Newark just to go to Newark, just to go to the airport. Right. Um, they got great restaurants. It's all very high tech. Food is pretty good. The prices are a little high because it's the airport mm -hmm. and all that. Mm -hmm. But it suggests that Honolulu is not only behind in the physical structure, because, you know, we were saying at the early part of uh, Linda Lingle's administration, 2002, uh, that there was a billion dollar project to fix it up. I, this, they haven't spent anything close. They haven't spent anything on it. It's the a airport mess. here is a mess. It really is. I, can, and, and I can't so get out of there money in less than a half being an hour. left on the table. So much money. You know, you could, you could sell things to tourists coming in and out. Um, you could, food, you're waiting for the plane, uh, all the stores in Ala Moana, you know, that kind of thing. Um, we, have, we have an incredible number of tourists and well-heeled tourists coming in here, and we don't, we don't have any real um, opportunities for them it's to buy It's completely unnavigable, I think, the if, airport. If the, if the airport would have these stores, somebody could make a lot of money. Somebody could make a lot of money. I, listen, I advocate that because, you know, I, I think it's, well, I think JFK is a terrible airport, too. So, I mean, I'm very picky. I don't shop there. <laughs> they have nice stores there. They have nice stores there. But, um, but here, it's just a completely counterintuitive. I mean, it, 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 there's no clear way the things work. It's not well laid out. It's... It's like a jumble. It's like a jumble of landing places, and I, I, I don't understand. Why is it like that, Jay? Um, government. Because it's old? Government stuck. You know, it's the same thing as, uh, as the roads and, and all kinds of infrastructure. It's that can't, nobody's in charge. Everybody sort of blends into the background. <laughs> you find people who are <clears throat> just doing bureaucratic knee-jerk all day for careers that last too long. You know, I think we could use a new airport even more than we can use a train. And you know how much I think we can use the train. But a, but a new airport, because we were just talking about this. Somebody I was talking with about uh, petroleum. And the highest use of petroleum in Hawaii is not on car um, gas, but jet fuel, because there's so many flights coming in and out and in and out. I mean, our airport is... It's the only way you can leave, the, leave, you know? It's not like we can get on the highway and go to another state or whatever. So the airport is integral to fu the functioning island, you know what I mean? I mean, the, every, everything comes into there. Yeah, we should have multimodal transportation there. We should have that, that wiki bus thing is ridiculous. ridiculous. Yeah, what is that? I can never ridiculous. understand where it's that goes. Where and, does and, and, it go? And year after year, until we all get old, I mean, after a while, we're just going to pop waiting for something to happen on the wiki bus. But nothing happens. And the physical structure is still the same. And the way it's set up for security and for shops and shopping and eating, still the same. So, I mean, I hope there's somebody out there. Uh, Director Ford, are you listening? We need a real boost on the airport. It would be great We are not keeping airport. up. We're supposed to be really a hospitality would. industry of, you know, of, of excellence. There's no excellence at the airport and at all. And it's sort of like a, like a moribund welcome of, like, you yeah. know... Hello, welcome to Hawaii. <laughs> right, that's exactly true. Nobody's cheerful. Nobody's, you know, out there, you but know. Compare that to when I first arrived here. Well, this has got to be 50-plus years ago. Um, you got out of the plane. You had to walk down a little gangway, right? Love there that. were no security. Like the Beatles. And there Beatles. were dancing girls with hula skirts serving you as much pineapple juice as you could possibly <laughs> imagine. 
and they were happy and smiling and loving and kissing, <laughs> putting lays on every passenger. I mean, now that's an arrival. I think that's not like that today. No, no, but I think a little of that would be nice. A little, a little bit, a little theater at the airport. I think, I think people would like. It's true, there is no theater there. No, and you know. You know, traveling to a place like this, you're traveling to a far, you know, a, p a paradise, a tropical paradise. There should be some theater, right? There should be a little bit of romance What's wrong and mystery. with, uh, you know, putting a Kodak Hula Show kind of thing in when people arrive, they hear some live, uh, live right, Hawaiian music. Right, right, right. I mean, how hard is that? I know. How much could that cost? I know. Give me a break. I know. The airport is, it's really... I want to go to another thing, though. Okay, go ahead. What? Bathrooms. In the world or where? Well, call it... Com Comparative bathroom analysis. You know, I wanted to do a book on bathrooms all over the world. I, I think there's a book there. This, yeah. yeah, I think it's a book. I, I suggest to you that there are not enough bathrooms in Hawaii in the bathrooms that are public bathrooms and the bathrooms that are available. To, in fact, also private bathrooms, that's another discussion. Um, but the public bathrooms really, there aren't enough and the ones you find are awful. And uh, you don't know, blame it on the homeless, blame it on people who abuse the bathrooms. But that's not, that's not an excuse. Um, everybody has to go. Let me assure you of this. It's part of the human condition. And if you, you know, take the bathrooms away from them or you don't maintain the bathrooms, you're doing everyone a huge disservice. I do not understand what it is in the Hawaii culture that dumps, excuse the term, <laughs> dumps on bathrooms. Have you had a recent traumatic event with a bathroom or that engenders not had recent this? good events. Oh, oh, in Europe. In it's Europe amazing, and for that matter, it? in New York. And when I grew up in North, you too, where the bathrooms weren't, public bathrooms weren't all that good. No. They're better now. Yeah. And they're everywhere. You can find them in every kind of establishment. They're always there. And they're clean. Uh, and they have paper. They have paper. Paper. That's the acid test. Paper. They know that. They have no paper. Oh, bad thing. Or uh, doors on the <laughs> stalls. They don't even have doors on the, the stalls the here in, on the bathrooms. Terrible. Even the women's bathrooms. There's no excuse for that. If somebody rips the place off, takes all the doors off, um, you know, destroys it, steals the paper. So you put more paper in. So you put better doors on. You need somebody so you put to security. do that. But you need somebody Whatever. to do that. You need money. You need money to do yes. it. I need political will. What do you think of the new New York? Oh, well, since when? Was so it? fancy, though. I mean, it's so you know, with the nice bathroom. New York is hopping. <laughs> new York is hopping. Uh, I, I wanted to talk to you about that. I mean, we're both from New York originally. Mm -hmm. And it's hopping. I mean, Broadway is just this. The whole world is there. You know the old adage, you know, if you stand on 42nd Street, you'll, you'll meet everybody you ever knew. Right. Well, it seems to be true. I know. It's really unbelievable. And, uh, you know, the hotels are good. They're hopping with people. Um, the, the police are good. Uh, they caught that, that guy uh, who did the bomb right. on 23rd right. Street. Um, uh, the one thing that I have to say is a problem, and it's a problem for Hawaii and you know, is traffic. Um, traffic is really hard, and uh, you, you know there are a lot of cabs, but the cabs are all locked up. And, and we have the move. subway, and New York has the subway. Can you imagine if there's no subway? Oh gosh, but you know some people don't like the subway. I like the subway. Oh, the subway is very uh, efficient. And if you're, you're right, if two you're and a half bucks subway. or whatever it is two seventy five. But that is no argument for rail here. That's no argument for rail. Well, I disagree um, with you. You think it is an argument? Yeah. For rail. Okay. Well, <laughs> I think, think right. it's just the argument you have for a deep rail. Pocketbook, I think. <laughs> The problem, though, is um, when, you, when you have all these taxi cabs lined up um, and you have, everybody wants to travel by taxi cab because, you know, it's the safest, cleanest way yeah. to get around. Um, the, the price of a given ride goes up. It's expensive. And I was, sometimes it was, you know, breathtaking how expensive a taxi cab Uber. was. Uber. You have to so Uber. So I get in to Honolulu yesterday mm -hmm. and I get a taxi because my wife insisted on taking a taxi cab. And we had parked downtown, so this was a ride of about three miles, okay, to get from the airport to downtown. It was actually a bad decision, because the first thing is we had to wait nearly half an hour for a taxi cab. What's the problem? A lot of taxi cabs can't go out there. They're politically barred from going out there. Right. It's not a security issue. No. It's just politics. They can't go out there. Then you finally get a taxi cab after a lot of really crazy things. Get a, you get a taxi cab, and now you drive three miles to downtown. Thirty bucks. Yeah. That rate per mile is way higher than any place on my trip, including Manhattan. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think so because I'm always shocked when I ever I take a little quick trip. Like sometimes I go from my house to Alamana, which is probably half a mile, and it's just it's like twelve bucks or something. It's just crazy. The crazy same amount. guys who were charging the thirty bucks are fighting against Uber and Lyft in the city council and winning with the politicians. I know, they can't go to the Who have no sense of how important it is that we have that one 
multimodal mode available to people. This could be a great town for taxis. It used to be a better town for taxis. Is that true, really? I think so. You don't have to have a car. You have to spend the money. You well, you know what they did in fuel. New York? They banned cars so many places. I mean, we could ban cars from, like, you know, maybe near Waikiki or, I mean, they, re they banned cars in places people never thought they would, like Broadway and 47th Street. There's a whole big stretch of Broadway that there are chairs and tables now. And I mean, that's true. Sixth Avenue between, oh, gee, between like um, 34th Street and maybe 59th Street a couple of days ago. It was. Sunday, Monday, Saturday. It was Saturday. No traffic. They cut it all off. Yeah. They, they had food stands and mm -hmm. trinket stands and mm -hmm. People came in by the thousands mm -hmm. just to hang around. And that would work here, too, because there's a lot of bicyclists here. A lot of bicycles in New York, believe it or not. Yeah, now there are. There are definitely a lot of bicycles. But, I mean, uh, closing the roads here would work. It would work, I think, you know. But people aren't, uh, they're just not thinking in that that's kind of an avant-garde, public space kind of Jane Adams way of thinking, right? right. You know we, what we I mean? We don't have that we, consciousness here. We don't. We don't have the this. public ought to be up in pitchforks right. about public bathrooms, about the airport, and about public spaces in general. New York has been very good about um, uh, developing quality of life public spaces for people to share, to have lunch at. There's, they have greenery, they have waterfalls, they have things that people, you know that people in a city don't get to see very often. They, they've, they've, uh, they've, done, they've really done, I'd say over the past 20 years, really, really it's a, changed things. It's a fabulous things. city. You walk down the street and see all these people, you, you never hear the same language they're twice. They're all smart. They're <laughs> all smart, you, they're, they're all, all smart. hustling. It's true. And they're friendly, and you can talk to them. But they have so many languages, so many places. They come from everywhere. I know. And they all live together. Live together in not only harmony, but in excited harmony. No, it's true. It's true. <coughs> like, you know, you go to the deli, and there's like maybe an Indian guy at the deli, and he's got an opinion about the election. And the guy behind you is from China, also has a question about, uh, also has an opinion mm -hmm. about the election. And you're standing, you're getting your morning coffee. All of a sudden, you're engaged in a you know, political debate. You're talking about the mayor or the bombings or whatever. And Everybody talks about it. They're all informed. Everybody's They're all informed. informed. That's it's not just TV, because TV there is about the same as what we have here. Somehow, they're otherwise informed. I think people it, still read the paper pretty. I think they do, a lot of papers there. And uh, we'll take a short break. When we come back, we're going we're to hear about <laughs> what? Mary Ann's latest thinking and my latest thinking about the Trump-Clinton campaign. Oh, We're going to squeeze out a subject. minute or two, <laughs> even though we don't want to. We're going to force ourselves. Oh, we ourselves. want to. One of we'll us come wants right back. to. <laughs> Hi, I'm Chris Leatham with Think Tech Hawaii, and I'd like to ask you to come watch my show, The Economy and You, each Wednesday at 3 p.m. Thank you for watching Think Tech. I'm Grace Chang, the new host for Global Connections. You can find me here live every Thursday at 1 p.m., where we'll be talking to people around the islands or visiting the islands who are connected in various aspects of global affairs. So please tune in, and aloha, and thanks for watching. Thank you for watching Think Tech Hawaii, Asia in Review. My name is Johnson Choi. My next show next month is on October 13, 11 a.m. See you then. Bye-bye. Aloha. My name is Richard Emery, host of Condo Insider. More than a third of Hawaii's population live in some form of association. And our show is all about educating board members and owners about their responsibilities and obligations and providing solutions for a great association. Bingo. Well, so I went around in Portugal and I asked people, whether well, this is the day after the debate last Monday, I said, what do you think, you know, and, I, you know, and people understand that whether they speak English or not, I would say Trump on the one hand or Clinton on the oh, other hand. Oh, they know, they know. You know, sort of the gestures, and, and uh, I'd say 90% of them, uh, you know, uh, liked Clinton. Uh, that's because they didn't like Trump. And the ones who articulated, you know, why they didn't like Trump is uh, they thought he was crazy. They thought he was mentally crazy. Um, and they, that scared them because they, they looked to the U.S. for leadership. I mean, it's, it's the most influential, we are the most influential country, and they care who is our leader. You missed the and debate, I would say, right? I would Wait, did you see the them, debate? I would say to them, I just saw it in detail in the middle of the night. <laughs> I would say to them, who are you going to vote for? 
Trump or Clinton. These people are American citizens. They can't but vote. But they have a vested interest, They right? have a vested interest, and they would answer the question in a serious way. I'm going to vote for Trump or Clinton. <laughs> so what? <laughs> you can't vote. Right. Well, it's, it's a state of mind. Voting is a right. state of mind. <laughs> I think if you allowed them to vote, the percentage would be higher than in, in Hawaii. Um, and, and they liked, they, the ones who did like Trump, and there were a few, uh, was usually on the lines, he's, he's very macho. He's strong, he's macho. But th there was no, as there is in, uh, in those... I think she's more macho than he is, but that's just my opinion. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I mean, I wish they would have the bloody election already. I know. Do we, do we, do we need to know more Two about more how debates. they play this out? Two it's more a debates. passion play that goes on and on and on. And just as you think that all the, you know, the, the television is full of this stuff here and uh, in the East Coast, all across the country. It is full of this stuff. It's full of this stuff in in Portugal, too. Yeah, I, I know. We had, yeah, the, I've spoken to many Europeans who are fast. They're fascinated by this. They just don't understand how, uh, you know, they just don't understand how the election got to this point. But I want to tell you that this is October 1st. I said this. Andrew and I did a talk. We did it. He said, she said on Friday. And I said this on Friday, and I say this now. October 1st marked the beginning of the plummet the descent of Donald Trump. He's going to, I think that she's going to win in a spectacularly large number now. I really do. Because he, between his taxes and his, the things he said about women and his, his, his attitude, at the debate, his demeanor was like fascinating. Don't you, didn't you think his demeanor was fascinating? But we are in real time, Marianne. And that'll anything, all go away? Anything could happen any day. You know, that's the crazy thing. It's like, it's like you don't know whether some strange new factor, some strange new thing, if she got sick, for example, that would change it. If he got sick, that would change it. Uh, some remarkable event um, that requires new opinions from them, and they take an opinion. Which right, is, that's true, some which, which event, falls, right. uh, you know, A terrorist the, in, event or something like that. Yeah, yeah it could happen. And, and that, that will change it, too. Um, and of course, and I, I mean to talk about this in other programs, that it's, it's, a, it's a revelation that uh, Vladimir Putin is going to manipulate or try to manipulate the election um, on, I know. on the Internet. Um, and this, this is really scary. And frankly, the, the one revelation I'll give you about that is that even if he doesn't, even if he does nothing about it, people will wonder if he is doing something. You think so, really? And sure, so he's planted that he's seed. He's already planted the seeds of, um, you know, lack of confidence. Right. And I, it's got to be a big factor in what happens. Well, he monkeyed now. around in the DNC, right? Didn't he hack like the DNC? The Russians he hacked did. the he DNC? And, and, and Trump invited him to hack Hillary. How nice. Uh, but, I mean, you know, that, that's got to be... All I'm saying is that uh, you're going to hate me when I say this. You know, it's not over till the fat lady sings. I could never <laughs> hate you, but yes, I, to, I, I told you, we can't talk about fat ladies. <laughs> fat ladies, all ladies, no lady wants to be, uh, you shouldn't even sit and notice about their weight. The poor, the poor little plump, she was sort of plump, the Miss Universe. But well, I want to yeah. close with uh, some stuff that you know or don't know about Portugal. Tell me Portugal facts. Uh, we, had a, we had a great flight. Uh, okay. we, you can fly from Honolulu to Newark, stay overnight to rest, and then you can fly from Newark directly to Lisbon, Lisboa, if you want. I love Lisboa. <laughs> I love that. And um, we, we just, uh, it was relatively painless to get there. Uh, and once there, we, we stumbled into this great hotel, which was really 1892 it was built, it was, and it was kept in meticulous condition. And every night uh, there was a concert in the salon, the great, the great oh, hall so nice. there as you walked in. And the public was invited, and they came and they listened. Some of them were coming like for years to hear the music that emanated from this hotel. Isn't that nice? Yeah, it's really nice. What's and it called, the, the hotel? Do you remember what Yeah, Avenida, which is the word for uh, avenue. Right. Uh, Liberda, Liberdad, Liberdad, Liberdad. Okay, Liberty. Avenida Liberdad, I have because to look it up. Because there have been various revolutions and tumult, tumultuous, tumult, tumultuous events in Portugal right. over the past hundred years, in, including some recent things. Um, and Liberdad is, uh, I guess that's instead of the way it was before. The way it was before was this avenue, was a beautiful avenue with tree-lined streets and everything, um, was, you know, more like for the royalty. And uh, the royalty, you know, we were there for uh, hundreds of years. The other revelation about, about Portugal, which you didn't know and I didn't know either, is that it was the lead 
discovering power for a hundred years. From, say, mm, 1450 to 1550. Yeah, it was really, really influential, it was right? really influential. It was sending its ships out everywhere. It was doing high-tech ropes and high-tech masts and high-tech sails well, What and were hulls. some of their big discoveries? Was Vasco da Gama from He's Portugal? He's the great hero. Yeah. He's the great hero. Everybody loves Vasco da Gama. Uh, remember, Columbus did not come from Portugal. He came from no. Spain. Yeah, it came from, it came from Genoa. It came, but he, came he, he went, from he went, Italy, went, of course. I thought you'd say he, something. He, <laughs> <laughs> but he came uh, un, under the uh, flag of Spain, yes, yeah. under uh, Queen Isabella. But Portugal was ahead of Spain. Portugal was discovering all these places. I know they were. I knew they were very powerful. I didn't know they were the top. Oh, uh, South America, you know, Brazil, of course, South America, in various places in the in the Caribbean and South America. Uh, you see, I think they went to Nova Scotia. They discovered Nova Scotia way back when. They had ships going everywhere, all through Africa, um, all, India. They discovered India. I mean, we didn't know. I didn't know this. Uh, they were, of course, um, you know, Macau and um, and uh, other places in that area, and they and they were the first ones to actually visit Japan. Really? And I'm going to tell you something. You didn't know this. Are you ready? Are you sitting I'm not, down? I'm, I'm okay. never ready. <laughs> the word for for thank you in Portuguese, which is you know an odd variation on Spain in Spanish. It's not the same. Right. In fact, the Spaniards can't understand the Portuguese, but the Portuguese can understand the Spaniards. Okay. The word for thanks in Portuguese is obligato. Oh, obligato. like arigato. Sounds like arigato. The reason is, are you sitting down? The Japanese got it from the Portuguese. Really? Re is that really true? It's absolutely really? absolutely true. Arigato is the Japanese pronunciation of obligato. Oh, that is They so came in the, I think it was 1530s sometime. They, they, they found Japan. They were the first Howleys there. And, uh, That's you know, amazing. Yeah. I would have never thought yeah. that. That's amazing. Yeah. And, That's amazing. And, and, but there was an exchange of culture, too, because tempura, tempura, which is a big Japanese mm -hmm. food, that, that, that was originally, let me think, whether tempura came from Japan and went to Portugal, or whether it was in Portugal and went to Japan. But there was an exchange right, of tempura, right, too. Right, right. So a lot of the cultural points, you know, interesting points, were exchanged between uh, Portugal and Japan. That's so fascinating. It is fascinating. And they, and they have a map, you know, it, it takes a, like a city block for this map where they have it all laid out on what year they discovered this and what year discovered that. They were world travelers. They were the most you know, active, aggressive world travelers, world discoverers of, of any country in Europe. Now I want to read a book about that period in Portugal's history because yeah. it's probably really, really interesting. It's probably fascinating. It is fascinating. Uh, uh, well, Portugal is fascinating. People are very laid back, very friendly. Food is very good. They're into fish. I, I told you in the break. Um, when you tell them you're from Hawaii, do they know where that is, or do they? Well, they give you the same, you know, the same reaction that all of Europe does. Oh, Hawaii! <laughs> oh, we love to go to Hawaii. I said, well, you have a lot of the elements of Hawaii. Yeah, right. right there, exactly. You know? Don't get too excited. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we have to work for a living. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. So I, I would go again. I mean, I don't say that about a lot of countries. Really? I would go again. And Portugal is finding uh, is is very attractive now to people in Europe. It's safer than other places in Europe. There's not, not any terrorism there. Um, it's very welcoming. There are people, from, it's like New York, and has, every language is spoken. Um, and people are very friendly and engaging. Don't and you think it's fascinating it that it uh, could have once been a world power? It was. It was a world power with Spain and the Netherlands. You know, well, Spain, and Spain took away some of their holdings. The Dutch took away some of their holdings. And ultimately, the British took away a lot of their holdings. Right. It's kind of amazing, the history of... Uh, a country, or you know how the history of imperialism, I guess, had countries like you know even England. Great, the sun never sets on the British Empire. Now it's like a really tiny little place. Yeah, it's just, it yeah. just should we should be aware of that. America we should, learn should be aware. From what what yeah. happened there? They they went down the slippery slope sometime after, I guess, um, 1550, and uh, when their holdings were taken from them because they didn't they didn't prevail in sea battles and the like. Uh, they, and they had a bad uh, earthquake, by the way. That oh, really? Them. 1755, okay. that really wrecked them, and they took a long time to fix things up. And in those days, it was harder to fix things up. But what, what I think the lesson that I would leave people with now, you know, as we approach the end of the show, is um, if you have trade, 
if you have connections with other countries, if you engage with them, you buy and sell, manufacture, you know, if you have commercial engagement with them and people engagement, your economy is better. You have to engage. If you don't engage, you know, you, you slide down that slope. I think in so many ways, yeah, not just economically, I think, uh, you know, culturally, and I just think it's very healthy for people to uh, explore and have uh, others come to their country. And that's what made one thing that makes New York so exciting, yes, right? Yes, I agree. They, they're out there. So things like Brexit, you know, very disturbing. Um, so disturbing. Yeah, and I just heard on the radio that there was a, a similar re referendum in Hungary, Hungary has a population of 10 million, and for comparison, Portugal has a population of 12 million, 3 million of whom live in uh, Lisbon. It's just oh, really? So you know the, the relative population. Anyway, uh, Hungary had a referendum on whether they should permit any further uh, immigrants to come in. And uh, the, the percentage of people that voted in favor of continued immigration was 90%. However, the, the terms of the referendum were that you had to have a, a, um, a, a turnout of over 50%, a quorum. So oh, okay, they, okay. They didn't reach the quorum. Oh, what? A, so oh. the vote is doesn't count. Okay. So now, you know, this real issue about whether they will take... Uh, Are they going to do it again? Vote again? I hope so. I hope so. Well, that's but, unfortunate. I mean, you can see the, there's a sweeping nationalism now in the EU. And, um, yeah, you can you can see it. Yeah. And, and these referend referendi, <laughs> right? These referendi. I mean, starting with Brexit, but also look at Scotland. You right. know, last year, um, you know, it's it's really interesting how many politicians will will cop out and put it out in a referendum instead of make making the decision themselves, which they could do. Um, and then it's interesting to see how people more and more seem to want to fold in on their own Yeah, country. xenophobia. They're yeah. xenophobic. And, but you're right. It's, it's that will cause a culture to languish. It will cause an economy to languish. And uh, they think it's going to be good in England for the economy, but I don't think it will be. I, no. I think the permeability of the borders and, and the working, being able to work uh, across Europe is yeah. a huge thing. So what happened in Portugal, to, to close up on that, what happened in Portugal was that um, if you could get out there and discover and trade with all these faraway places, your economy was going to be significantly better. Right. Um, now, just trying to you know, put that forward, take, take it a, a sort of uh, jump it forward and uh -huh. see how that works now, I think the reality is if you have an ability to compete within the new global context, and that means not xenophobia. It means trading with everyone. Right. It means opening your borders, not closing them. Right. Um, if you can compete with that, more, much more sophisticated competition, but if you can compete with that and reach out, you will do better. You will be a better economic power if I you do that. I think that's right. I think that's right. Yeah. And, and, but this, we'll see how the trend is, where the trend goes. It doesn't seem to be trending in that direction. No, but, no, no. Okay, but I think well, you're right. We're going we're gonna to do so this again. So glad you're back. Oh, so oh, glad to be you here so with much. you, Marianne. <laughs> That's Marianne Sasaki. He said, she said, we enjoy doing My this. And we, yes, we will do it again. <laughs> <Good>. <laughs>